A new study is making major headlines today, even though it hasn't been released yet. It's being massively promoted by mainstream media organizations, so I'm immediately skeptical. But I wanted to look into it and talk about it since they're calling it the largest COVID vaccine study. The study found COVID mRNA gene therapy shots were linked to small increases in neurological blood and heart conditions. Several times in the media, they mentioned the increases were small. They used the word small a bunch. But let's first talk about the organization that funded the study. Then we'll talk about the authors, and then we'll look at the actual study. So first, the study was funded by the Global Vaccine Data Network, which sounds very established and academic, and they use fancy words on their website like post-introduction of pharma, pharmacovigilance, <laughs> pharmacovigilance study responsiveness. And they mention it's a multinational collaboration, and they also specifically mention COVID-19 vaccines, which clearly is why they created this Global Vaccine Data Network. Out of thin air, by the way. And they say six countries are involved in 31 sites and somehow 300 million people are involved. This is all completely hilarious because if you go to their Facebook page, they have exactly 139 followers. And their first post was May 9th, 2023. So clearly they're gaslighting you on their website. I did a podcast a while back with Ben Pakulski. And he has 3 million followers on his Facebook page. Billions and billions and pages. So that's genuine following. Not some bullshit. Over a billion, 300 million, trillion, 300 million. Furthermore, when you dig deeper by going into the World Health Organization's website, it says the Global Vaccine Network is a member of the World Health Organization-led project Vaccine Safety Net. So it's basically just a shell company for the WHO, for the World Health Organization, which we all know is a deeply corrupt organization. Shame on anyone who works for them. They should disband and do something better with their lives. Uh, we provided notice yesterday to Capitol Hill of our intent to withdraw from the World Health Organization. But the president has made very clear, we are not going to underwrite an organization that has historically been incompetent. But don't forget the history. This is an institution that got it wrong on SARS. It got it wrong on Ebola. The United States had to create its own system, PEPFAR, to do the work to prevent and come up with solutions to the HIV AIDS problem. We did that, the United States did that. The World Health Organization has a long history of corruption and politicization. Next, the principal investigator of this study, the guy that oversaw the study was Harland Krumholtz, which of course he says these COVID vaccines can save millions of lives, which there's no data to support by the way, but he says there can also be small numbers of people adversely affected. So let's look at his legal conflict of interest in scientific research because these legally need to be listed which is a good thing he has served on the advisory boards for various pharmaceutical companies and he is a scientific advisor for centogen which means he probably makes some bunch of money from them what the hell is centogen it's a vaccine producer and one with a history as sketchy as the global vaccine network for example the owner of this vaccine company centogen is naomi balabin and she has a whopping eight connections on LinkedIn. So she's almost as popular as the Global Vaccine Network with their 139 Facebook followers. Oh, and the Global Vaccine Network doesn't even have a LinkedIn page, so I can't compare that number. So anyway, this Krumholtz is clearly a big vaccine pusher or he's making money on vaccines. And sure enough, if you go to this new study, the actual study, its conclusion is that targeting public health messaging may be needed to ensure engagement in public health prevention measures as global vaccination efforts continue. In other words, we're gonna push these things globally and we need to do anything it takes to get it done with the messaging. So looking at the conflict of interest in other authors on this paper, it reads like Fyodor Dostoevsky's Crime and Punishment book. It's a super long list. And of course, all kinds of influences were made here by the CDC, since they're trying to save face on their debacle of pushing vaccines on kids that don't need it, even six month old babies. Their list of recommended vaccines on the CDC is so long, it's hard to even find a COVID vaccine recommendation and, and all the other ones they have. But going back to the conflict of interest, it's got the global vaccine data networks listed. So we know they're funding, they're literally funding this. And basically it's a list of who's who's 
in the pharma companies, including Pfizer, that's also on here, because they have their tentacles and everything. So what's really obnoxious about this supposed study is it's not even published yet. You literally cannot yet analyze the findings because they didn't publish them yet. They've only published an abstract where they can say anything, any opinions they want. But one thing that's disconcerting is that they only looked for adverse events of special interests up to 42 days following mRNA gene therapy. And we all know how underreported these events are and sometimes how long term they're. So basically, what these corrupt organizations are doing here is they're trying to downplay the vaccine injuries because we all literally know someone, all of us, we know someone that had vaccine injuries, and they're trying to publish something that researchers and mainstream media can point to as an authority and say, see, there are a few minor injuries and a few not small number of cases, but overall we saved millions of lives while making billions of dollars. It's basically trying to get ahead of the landslide of vac vaccine injury data that's gonna be coming out in the form of excess deaths, heart attacks, heart palpitations, on and on, so they can control the narrative and continue to push this cash cow, which is the mRNA injection of all types, not just for COVID, but of all types. That's what it comes down to.